Welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman. I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Porsche 944. Hope you enjoy it. Growing up in the 80s, Porsche 944s were everywhere. They were in my Matchbox collection. They were tearing up my street. They were on TV. Good afternoon and welcome to Moleport Park near Bowmanville, Ontario for the 1988 season opener of the Rothmans Porsche Turbo Cup. And in the movies. Now that they have become affordable for the poors, like myself, maybe there should be a real one in my driveway. The Porsche 944 was a sports car manufactured from 1982 until 1991. It was a front-engine rear-wheel drive model based on the 924 platform. The 944 was available in either coupe or convertible. Engine choices were naturally aspirated or turbocharged. Over 163,000 944s were produced. It was the most successful sports car in Porsche's history up until the 997 Carrera and the Boxster were introduced. The 944 was introduced in 1982. 944s were the next model up from the 924. The 924 did everything a little bit better than the 924. It was faster, it handled and stopped better, it was better equipped, more refined, and more comfortable. How much better it really was was up for debate. The German approach would be to use math. The math says 20 better. Speaking of math, 944s had near 50-50 weight distribution, 50.7 front and 49.3% rear. This near-perfect balance is attributed to the rear transaxle balancing out the engine in front. Hi, I'm Jackie McLaren. Please remember to like and subscribe and comment to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. Porsche 944 yearly changes. Mid-1985. The 944 got a major refresh. New items included a new dashboard, door panels, embedded radio antenna, Porsche Hi-Fi sounds... Ugh. Porsche. Porsche. Porsche Hi-Fi sound system, optional heated and powered seats, flush mounted windshield, upgraded alternator from 90 amps to 115 amps, new front and rear cast alloy control arms and semi-trailing arms, revised transaxle mounting to reduce noise and vibration, new phone dial style wheels replace the cookie cutter style wheels, foosh wheels remained an option, a larger oil pan and a larger fuel tank round out the changes. 1987 more changes occurred in 1987. The 944's Motronic DME was updated. Wait, what the hell is a DME? The DME is an electronic control module, ECM. DME stands for Digital Motor Electronics. Crazy Germans. Stop it! That's The Hehem DME now had anti-lock braking system and airbag capabilities. The wheel offset had to change to incorporate the ABS, so the Fouche wheel option went in the bin. 1989. In early 1989, Porsche upgraded the 944's engine from 2.5 liters to 2.7 liters. The engine gained a few ponies and a significant increase in torque. The new engine featured a Siemens cylinder block and new cylinder heads with larger valves. Porsche 944 Turbo yearly changes. 1986. The 944 Turbo was introduced in 1986. The cool kids called it by its chassis code 951. As the name suggests, the turbo was both turbocharged and intercooled. The turbo made 217 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. The 944 Turbo was the first Porsche to use ceramic port liners to retain exhaust gas temperature. The turbo engine also featured forged pistons. It wasn't all about the engine though. The turbo also featured improved aerodynamics with an integrated front bumper, a strengthened gearbox with specific final drive ratio, standard external oil coolers for both the transmission and the engine. Turbos also had standard 16-inch wheels, optional forged foosh wheels, and upgraded spring rates to handle the extra weight. The turbos had 911 Brembo brakes. 1987 the 1987 944 Turbo became the first car in the world to have standard driver and passenger side airbags. Other updates included a 180 mile per hour speedometer, up from 170 miles per hour, and a low oil level light was added. The transmission oil cooler went in the bin. The control arms were redesigned to reduce the car's scrub radius. 
ABS was now an available option. 1988. The 944 Turbo S came with a more powerful engine with 247 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 258 foot-pounds of torque at 4,000 RPM. The standard 944 Turbo generated 220 horsepower and had 243 foot-pounds of torque. The higher output came from using a larger KKK K26-8 turbocharger housing and a new, um, DME tune. The new tune maintained maximum boost until 5,800 RPM. The tune in the standard 944 Turbo had the boost decrease slightly as the RPM increased. The Turbo S was not all about engine, though. The suspension was the famous M030 option. This option package consisted of Kony adjustable shocks at the front and rear. The fronts were adjustable coilovers with progressive rate springs, larger hollow rear anti-roll torsion bars, and harder durometer suspension bushings. The package also included a larger 26.8mm hollow anti-roll torsion bar at the front and chassis reinforcement brackets in the front frame rails. The 944 Turbo S wheels were 16-inch Ford Fuchsias. Wheel widths were 7 inches at the front and 9 inches in the rear. The Turbo S came equipped with Z-rated tires. They were 225-50-16 in the front and 245-45-16 in the rear. The manual transmission had a performance clutch, an external oil cooler, and a limited slip differential. The Turbo S had 928S4 front brakes featuring larger Brembo GT4 piston fixed calipers and 12-inch discs. The rear Brembo brakes were the same as the standard Turbo. ABS brakes came standard on the S. Turbo S interiors featured power seats for both driver and passenger. A 10-speaker stereo with graphic equalizer and amplifier was also a common option. 1989. The Turbo S designation went in the bin. 1989 and later 944 turbos. All of the turbocharged 944s featured all of the Turbo S enhancements as standard equipment. Only exceptions were the M030 suspension and the Club Sport wheels were now optional. 944S. Porsche introduced the 944S in 1987. The S stands for Super. The 944S was equipped with high-performance naturally aspirated dual overhead cam 16-valve 187 horsepower 2.5-liter engine. The M44-40 featured a self-adjusting timing belt tensioner. This engine was Porsche's first use of a 4 valves per cylinder head and a dual overhead cam in the 944. The M44-40 had a redesigned camshaft drive, a magnesium intake manifold and valve cover. A higher capacity oil pan and revised exhaust system were also implemented. The alternator used was a 115 amp unit. Other improvements included stronger wheel bearings and a more powerful brake booster. Floating 944 brake calipers were standard, but the brake proportioning valve from a 944 turbo was used. The 944S also used an improved tune in the um, DME. The unit was now equipped with dual knock sensors to cope with the higher 10.9 to 1 compression ratio. The 944S had progressive springs, larger front and rear sway bars. The transmission and final drive ratios were geared to the high revving 2.5 liter dual overhead cam engine. The S had an impressive 6800 RPM rev limit. Dual airbags, a limited slip differential, and ABS braking systems were optional on the 944S's. 944S2 Porsche introduced the 944S2 in 1989. It was powered by a 208 horsepower naturally aspirated dual overhead cam 16 valve 3 liter engine. It was the largest production four cylinder engine of its time. The 944S2 had the same nose and rear balance as the turbo model. Dual airbags, limited slip differential, and ABS brakes were optional. Design 90 16 inch cast aluminum wheels came standard. 944S2 Cabriolet. Porsche introduced the 944S2 Cabriolet in 1989. It was the first 944 to feature a convertible top. American Sunroof Corporation got the contract to build the 944S2 Cabriolet. Turning a 944 into a convertible was no easy task. 944 coupe bodies were taken off the assembly line in Germany, then taken to ASC in Germany. The torsional strength that was lost cutting off the roof was restored using reinforcement plates welded into the front end and floor plate. Bespoke bracing to support the convertible top and the new rear deck lid were also welded in place. The cabriolet body was then sent back to... The cabriolet body was then put back on the standard assembly line, where it would get painted in the production paint shop. 
and continued down the assembly line for a drivetrain install. The mechanically assembled cabriolet was once again sent back to ASC in for convertible top installation. Porsche 944 Turbo Cabriolet. Porsche unveiled the 944 Turbo Cabriolet in February of 1991. The Turbo S's 247 horsepower engine was married to the ASC Cabrio body. Stock performance. Motor Week tested the 1983 Porsche 944 and it ran 16.3 and a quarter mile at 81 miles per hour. They also tested the 1989 Porsche 944 Turbo. With some shutter, but we can't complain about the results. Not to 60 in our car took just 5.7 seconds. The quarter mile, 13.7 seconds at 103 miles per hour. Motor Week also tested the 1991 944 S2 Cabrio and it ran from 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds and covered the quarter mile in 15.1 seconds. The final speed was 92. Aftermarket performance. The aftermarket is limitless for the 944. High flow air filter. Cat back. Header. Lumpy cam. Or lumpy cams. Um... DME chips, turbo upgrades. Suspension goodies are also plentiful. Lowering springs, coilovers, beefier sway bars, tubular control arms. Racing. Wow, that 944 took that 944 to Gapplebee's. 944s are commonly road race. Right start across the front row. Brewer and Bella. They get away. Bella, as always, jumps away beautifully. Winter goes with him down to the inside. The funnel into turn one. We've got two specific groups. The front four. Then this gaggle sitting mid-pack there being led by holding then it's the uh, Michael Westaway Torbett's in the mix there as well and this little group immediately into turn one we've got two battle packs 944s are great for rallies sure that a 944 is a common drift car, but it happens. Perhaps the best use of a 944 is to take it out on the Nürburgring and let it stretch its legs. Oi, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting. Run. Buying a Porsche 944. The 944 was well built, but there are still a few things to look out for on these cars. 944s featured full body galvanizing but the tin worm still enjoys chewing on them. It is not unusual to see these cars with over 250,000 miles if they are well maintained. I researched problem areas, but there was nothing that really stood out as common mechanical problems. Potential problem areas appeared to be directly related to not following the maintenance schedules. Experts agree buying one with a full service history is highly recommended. Assuming the 944 was properly maintained, it should give you many more miles of enjoyment. Haggerty claims the average value of a 1983 Porsche 944 to be $11,400.
They also claim the average price of a 1991 944S2 Cabrio to be $17,600. For those with deep pockets, Haggerty claims the 1989 Porsche 944 Turbo's average price is $31,700. I believe the value of these cars is on the rise. Get yours soon before they cost 911 money. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars and my story of the Porsche 944. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Hey, Jackie, Jason from Jason Bowman Loves Cars here. Sorry to bother you on your day off. Brian and Mr. G said in the comments, I say Porsche wrong. You mean a Porsche like the soup? No, no, the German sports car. Thanks, dude. I'll see you on set. Later, bro.